Heinemann Higher, Chapter 9 on Integration, the Mixed Exercise, Mixed Questions and 9 are at the end. Number 9, slightly different this time, it's about distances and velocities and acceleration. And the first thing is the difference in the units that are used for that. Because for distance, or rather to say the letters are used, instead of using D for distance, it's an S that's used. D is used here in this derivative. And straight away that conflicts then with speed. S is used for distance, and then speed, well, strictly speaking, it's velocity that's talked about, speed being the, the actual value of the velocity, but velocity implies a vector with components, and that question said in a straight line. But even so, velocity, so there, a V is used for that, that's like the speed, and then acceleration, or at least that one's what it says, that's A. Then, if your distance changes in a given time, you must have been moving, so you've got a velocity and the velocity will be the rate of change of distance. The more the distance changes in a given time, the higher the velocity. If your velocity changes, you must be accelerating. The higher the change in the velocity, the greater the acceleration. The acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. So to work your way up through these quantities, what you have is differentiate the distance, you'll get the velocity, differentiate the velocity, you'll get the acceleration. Or if you want to work backwards, I'll have to anti-differentiate the acceleration to get the velocity. Anti-differentiate the velocity to get to the distance, which of course is integration. But watch integration, because integration is going to have to have the constants reintroduced. And that's when you have to think of things like initial values. So the thing would be this. At t equals zero, it tells you its velocity was u. But at t equals zero, it hadn't moved from its starting position yet, so s is going to be zero. You need to know these initial values in order to find these constants. Just like if you've got a graph, you need to have a point on the graph to be able to identify an unknown constant. Well, what does the first part say? first part says, using this, and it calls it a differential equation, sounds quite complicated, just means it's an equation with a derivative in it, show that the velocity is v equals u plus at. Well, First step's this, that says dy by dt, that must be a misprint, because it's actually, the acceleration is dv, that's why it should have been a v. I'll just put it the other way around. dv by dt equals a. Now, a's just, a doesn't involve t, is just a constant. So that means that if I want to get back to v, it's going to be the integral of a dt. Just as if I'd said dy by dx equals some number k. I'd have gone back and said, so how would I get to y? It'll be the integral of k dx. That doesn't involve x, so that would just go to kx plus some constant. It's going to be the same here. The variables are v and t. a is not one of the variables, so it's a constant. So that's just going to go back up to at, but there could have been some constant there that disappeared under the process of And that's when I need some extra points. If it was a graph, I'd have some points on it. Or in the case of distance, velocity, acceleration, I need initial values or values somewhere else. Use its initial ones. So this says, when t was zero, the velocity was u. Right, so I'll just put that into this. When t was zero, so a times zero, plus c, the velocity is u. So straight away, that means that c is equal to u. So v must be a t plus u, or if you like, v equals u plus a t. That'd be the first bit. I had to use these initial conditions to find this constant. Part B says, the distance travelled by a particle in t seconds is s metres. Show that s equals ut plus a half at squared. Well, I've got my velocity equation. Here's the velocity. Now, I know that velocity is equal to ds by dt. The velocity is the rate of change of just like distance over time, difference in distance over difference in time. Well, that means that ds by dt is u plus a t. So going back up a step, I would integrate that u plus a t dt. Or again, t is the variable, s and t are the variables. u and a are constants. So that constant term would go back up to the linear term. t would go back up to t squared, and it would be a half times a times that. Plus there may have been some other constant at the end. That's what I need my initial values. Well, at the start, when t was zero, it hadn't moved yet. The distance was zero, which means putting those points into it, I could put it over here, t zero, s zero, means that 
0 equals, and that term will just be 0, and that term will just be 0, so C is just 0, which means for this part then, S is going to equal just UT plus a half AT squared.